Hello, everybody. It's going to be a mixed media stream today. I'm super excited. Uh, let me know if my sound is okay. Welcome to everybody who is early. Welcome, Amumu, one of our wonderful members, and Evie as well in the chat. Hello, Geo Cat. Hello, Joanne. And welcome to today's stream. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Uh, and you can probably see that uh, we're going to be doing some collage with some pretty garbage. So welcome in. How are you guys doing? <laughs> My name is Faye, if you guys don't know me already. And uh, super excited for today's stream. I'm going to try to paint as fast as I can. I, I, I realize that doing a mixed media collage painting is pretty ambitious. <laughs> so I'm going to try to keep everything uh, else very brief. And yeah, so we put up a poll uh, a few days ago. And uh, the goal of today's stream is to commemorate a critically endangered species. So all these four animals are beautiful, yet very critically endangered animals. And you guys, our lovely subscribers and Discord members chose the Vaquita. So the Vaquita, and I'm really, really glad because that's actually what I wanted to paint. And I'm super glad that it won the poll. 56% um, of the votes. And Vaquitas are actually critically endangered. They are the most endangered species on Earth today with less than 10 remaining. And from the Wikipedia article I read, I'm not sure when that was updated and I don't know if they are now extinct, but only 10. So I really hope that they find each other and that they can make more vaquitas. Yeah, I know they, just a little bit of history on them. They are the world's rarest marine animal found in, um, found off the coast of California, and they are critically endangered because of overfishing. So they are a byproduct of overfishing, and it's really, really sad because they will be gone very, very soon. So let me know in the chat uh, if you've heard of this animal before, um, because I was, while I was doing research, I haven't really, I, I actually didn't even know um, that, uh, I've never even heard of them. But I did live in California for many years and they do have a really, really good uh, responsible fishing uh, campaign and you know all the restaurants are aware of it and so but, but these days it's really hard to tell whether or not that's just for marketing or if it's genuine I'm really hoping that it is genuine so not to be a downer today but you know we will be uh, today's stream is a little bit different because this is a um, this is the topic that I really really care about um, that I'm passionate about so I hope you enjoy and I hope you can draw along with me and doodle as well. Um, so before we get into that, uh, if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you are an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links in our social media and uh, they are in the description below. You can check our website for class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a YouTube channel, we're an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can continue making free content, consider becoming a member on YouTube or Patreon because as a member, you get access to really cool perks such as critiques and classes. Uh, as well as members only chat. So you can hang out with the Wing Canvas group uh, for as little as $2 a month. So uh, we also have a huge discount on our classes with a membership with a limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they are gone. All right. So uh, 
if you didn't know, if you haven't submitted already, this month's uh, challenge is endangered. And so we've designed these streams so that you can actually create along with us and then submit to our Discord. So exclamation point Discord if you want to learn more about how to submit. Uh, and before we continue, I just want to give a shout out to two featured uh, submissions. Um, and I chose some marine animals um, just to go along with today's stream. So the first one is a nice little doodle of a whale shark by Keeks, uh, one of our Discord members. So Keeks, if you're there in the chat, uh, this is a really cute little sketch. Uh, looks like marker and some mixed media on paper. I love seeing traditional work, guys, on the Discord. I know we do a lot of digital art, uh, but it is important to learn those traditional skills. Even though you may feel you're not great at them at first, it just takes a little bit of practice and you will uh, learn how to mix colors and all that stuff. So really uh, cute little sketch. Thank you so much for submitting. Uh, the next one I want to feature is an ox. Uh, sorry, I always have trouble <laughs> pronouncing this axolotl. Um, these are really cute little, uh, I believe they are amphibians. No. Are they amphibians? Correct me if I'm wrong. I've seen them in real life. They are really strange looking creatures and they are also critically endangered because of human development, wastewater disposal and loss of habitat due to droughts. They are super popular though. I've seen stuffies of them and I've seen like lots of uh, illustrations of them. So this is a really cute little drawing. Looks like uh, they're having a, a nice little drink underwater. And so shout out to uh, Hina. Uh, Hina, if you are there in the chat, say hello. All right. So let's get started today because we will need a lot of time. <laughs> um, just gonna catch up with the chat. I know, hopefully they won't go extinct. Yes, if you guys have any uh, illustrations or artwork of endangered animals, endangered species, please submit them. You could get featured in this month's streams. All right. Welcome in Flighty Feathers. I see some regulars. Winged Artist. Hey, welcome to Wing Canvas, Winged Artist. <laughs> um, I see some of you guys are drawing right now. Awesome. All right. And say thank you everybody to Joanne, who is our lovely mod, and she's gonna be supporting the chat. All right, guys. So I have saved lots of garbage over the years. Uh, one year I went on this mission to really, um, you know, be mindful of my waste. And let me tell you, I saved garbage for three months and I had a huge container, which I rummaged through this morning to get these uh, pieces for the collage. So the goal of the stream today and the lesson for today is to show you how you can incorporate other media, not just, you know, um, paint or marker, not just the traditional mediums that uh, everybody knows of, but you know, the less traditional mediums. And if you paint with acrylic, you'll know that acrylic is just plastic, right? And lo and behold, we use so much plastic in our day-to-day -day lives that this medium actually blends really, really well with acrylic. So what I did was I just cut up some seafood packaging um, that I've saved over the years and some blue, uh, you know, blue packaging and some barcodes. And so I'm going to, first of all, glue this onto my canvas. And if you have any questions, let me know, uh, specific to mediums and all of that. So what, uh, I usually use, I'm actually a big fan of Liquitex. Um, there's really two uh, very good 
professional acrylic mediums. One of them is Liquitex, the other is Golden. I just uh, happen to use Liquitex, but I, I do use both, but the, the majority is Liquitex. So they have this super heavy matte gel. Um, and the reason why I like acrylics, I tell my students this all the time, um, but the reason why I like acrylics is that they are super versatile. And if you know me, I, my first medium and my preferred medium is oil. Uh, and I've been, you know, I love how creamy it is. I love the consistency of it. Um, but I have recently become a really big fan of acrylic just because you can do so much with it, it dry so quickly. And it's, uh, it's a really, really versatile medium. So what I'm going to do first is just coat the entire canvas with this super heavy gel. And then, uh, I will glue, essentially this stuff will act as a glue, right? So I'm just going to put it on with a knife, put it on pretty thick. And then we will glue it on and then I'm gonna put another layer on top. So this stuff is basically when it dries, it's like a super thick, clear acrylic and you can use it as glue. Like I use this all the time for collage. I'm a huge fan of collage and I've been collaging my garbage for about 10 years now. <laughs> um, I just, you know, it's just a cool way to use up your garbage um, to, to reuse it and you know sometimes it looks really cool as well because you can sort of see some of that stuff uh, peeking through underneath so if you've been to my classes before you probably know that when I teach painting I always say tone the canvas tone the canvas that should be the first thing that you do um, and that's really because if you start on white, you don't really have a lot of context in terms of value. Just kind of like, you know, if you're a digital artist and you start on gray instead of white, it just gives you a little bit more value context, right? And that can actually really help you judge your values properly. Um, but because we're not really toning the canvas today, what we're doing is um, using garbage as sort of a tone. So that's going to be a little bit uh, different today. All right, so I'm just going to wet my brush and just kind of smooth this down. Oh, artist in the chat. Hey, Hina, welcome in. Your art was actually featured. <laughs> and glad you could make it to the stream and thank you for submitting so guys if you haven't submitted today uh, this month's challenge is actually really simple pick an animal that you think is beautiful that you want to commemorate before they are gone I definitely encourage you to submit um, I know this month's theme isn't as popular as our other themes where it's character based but you know you could make a character as well all right so put on this gel medium very thick and i'm going to be collaging everything on and i took a picture actually before before i took everything off just so i remember the basic layout of it um, but i just wanted to hold on i'm just gonna grab that picture I wanted to use up all of this plastic as sort of a background. So just have a loose plan. I don't have everything figured out yet. All right. 
And Winged Artist says, I named my account after you because I like art and wings. Thank you. That's really nice of you. Um, that's very cool to see. All right. And then this is a really big piece. I eat a lot of shrimp. I'm very guilty of uh, loving shrimp. And I know that it's a huge cause of overfishing. Um, but if you have any overlapping uh, pieces like this, you will need to put more gel medium underneath just so that it doesn't start to peel. So I did create a few other pieces in this series um, using similar technique. And sometimes like if you don't put the medium on thick enough, it will start to come off. And so I'm really trying to push it down with my palette knife. And I kind of like how the overlapping, you know, pieces of plastic, like the translucency there is really nice. Let me know in the chat, guys, if you guys work in collage, anybody here work in collage um, or have worked with collage before. Super fun. If you haven't tried it before, <laughs> I hope seeing me do this gives you the inspiration to try it for yourself. Not really. Yeah. Yes. Once or twice. Okay. It's something that I didn't really think I would enjoy. Like my original pieces uh, w using collage was mostly, you know, I would paint stuff kind of like um, Eric Carl's work uh, with, he's a children's book illustrator and he would, um, you know, collage his own watercolor pieces and they are always so beautiful. Um, so I did some of that. I collaged my own artwork, prints of my own artwork. Uh, I collaged uh, a lot of patterns. So before I would paint things like furniture and then instead of painting the patterns, I would collage a pattern onto that and it looked kind of cool. Um, and just recently have I been really experimenting with garbage. So, hey Kevin, welcome. Collage is fun. I used to collage. Oh, with your mom. That's great. Yeah. I know. I'm, I'm guilty. I, I love shrimp. <laughs> shrimp is so good. I learned actually a lot about sustainable seafood farming when living in California. Um, I live in Toronto now, but it's uh, uh, definitely a big uh, eye opener, you know, because every everything you do affects something, it affects somebody and you may not even be aware of it. And I think that it's, you know, really important to, um, know where your food comes from. I think a lot of us uh, really don't know where our food comes from. And I really hope that modern technology in the future will allow us to track our food and food sources better so we can make more responsible choices. Because as a consumer, you choose, right? You choose with your, with your money and if none of us are aware of what is affected, then, you know, we don't really, we can't really make good decisions. So it starts with awareness, which is why I encourage you guys to draw a, draw or paint, create a commemorative illustration portrait of an endangered species, post it onto social media. If you do, definitely tag us uh, and we will love to share your creations. So you can tag us on Instagram, Facebook. Again, you can submit to the Discord. We would love to share your creations and give you guys a shout out. All right, just trying to figure out where I wanna put everything. 
I really like all of these, these barcodes. And my goal for the final piece is to kind of have this uh, creature disappearing a little bit. So it's, uh, you know, disappearing into this background of garbage and packaging. All right. <laughs> I had this huge canvas picked out. <laughs> and then I went to start it and I was like, oh my goodness, I only have about an hour and a half. I, I don't, I think I, I need to go a little bit smaller. So thank goodness, because even the gluing takes, takes a bit of time. Uh, how are you, Faye? I'm good. Thank you. How are you guys? I hope that everybody's having a really good weekend so far. I stayed up too late last night, so I took a nice nap before the stream, which was great. And all right. So. If you just joined, uh, I am using a gel medium. This is called a matte super heavy gel by Liquitex. And I bought this tub probably about five years ago and I haven't used very much of it. This stuff is actually great because what you can do is you can add texture to your paintings very easily. Um, because it is transparent, you don't really need to uh, you don't even need to add pigment to it. Like if you just put it on your canvas as is, it will take on the colors underneath and it'll give it really cool texture. So, all right. So I'm gonna just let this dry, give it a little bit of time and take out the colors that I'll be using. So if you don't know what a vaquita looks like, it, it looks like a bit of a dolphin. Um, it's cute. It's got this ring around its eyes. Let me just pull up the pole again. Uh, it's got a, it's got this black lip and a bit of a fade along its forehead and a nice black ring around the eye, kind of like a raccoon and a dolphin. So interesting looking creature. And the nice thing about acrylics is that it dries super fast. So I can just give it a little bit of time and it will be dry very shortly. And if you guys don't uh, know, you can use, like I like to use orphan socks. Do you guys ever <laughs> lose socks in the dryer? Uh, <laughs> happens to me all the time. I lose socks and then I end up with these one-offs or I get holy socks because I skate a lot and sometimes my socks get holes in them but they are really handy for drying off your brushes. <laughs> it's a curse. Yeah. I know it is. Somehow dryers love to eat socks. <laughs> all right so I'm gonna take out uh, some paints and then start to plan out this painting. Um, so I'm just gonna take out some acrylics. I just bought this big tube of white and it matches my canvas so far. I run out of white so much. So whenever I see white paint on sale, I just grab it. White is usually the color that you need the most. <laughs> the dryer costs require an offering. <laughs> yes, I know, right? But you know, you can reuse everything. You can give everything a second life. And so my orphan socks have uh, been, you know, they've served their purpose in helping me, helping me uh, clean my brushes. So I don't really like to use paper towels when I clean my brushes because it leaves little little bits of paper behind and I'm not a huge fan of that. All right, so uh, just going through my colors with you all, uh, this is Thalo Blue and it's one of my favorite colors. If you know me, I don't use green. I use two types of blue. 
phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and you can mix all of your uh, colors from those two blues. So all my greens, all of my blues. I'm taking out a little bit of prism violet. These paints are very old, as you can tell. <laughs> I've had them for probably 15 years, if not longer. Um, and they're still, they're still good. So if you buy paints in tubes, they last a really, really long time. Um, these ones were what we used at the studio. So these are student grade paints. And so we, we bought them in bulk in these jars. And the good thing about these is you can put them back, right? The paint in tubes, you can't put back, but these dry. So if you, you know, you can't keep, uh, a jar of paint for 15 years and, not expect it to dry all right uh, i took out a little bit of cadmium yellow light uh, i don't i'm not using a specific palette today but i do want to make this creature which is gray um, the ketos are gray but i did want to add some color to it so i'm taking out my basically my primary colors with a little bit of purple Usually I would use a ultramarine blue, but uh, which is kind of purpley, but I ran out of ultramarine, so I will be using purple instead. Um, and a really great color to neutralize things is your umbers. So raw umber and burnt umber. So this one is raw umber. Let me know, guys, if you've ever used raw umber. It's a kind of like a greenish brown color. And it's a really nice color for painting uh, monochromatic pieces. Because when you mix it with white, it looks like, um, it looks like gray, but like a nice gray, like a warm gray and not a really cool gray. Just gonna catch up with the chat here. Uh, <laughs> Blue, yes, I, I use a lot of blues. I don't buy greens. Flighty Feather says, Faye, the spring break classes were really fun. Oh, I'm so happy. Which, uh, which, were you in Iggy's camp, the cartooning and anime camp? We're offering that again, the March break camp just ended. Last week was March break, but we're offering camps again in April. So the first week of April starting on april fools <laughs> uh we'll be having spring break camp so you can sign up for cartooning and anime or digital art uh <laughs> nice all right so my piece isn't quite dry yet still a little bit tacky the problem with using acrylics uh is like there's, there's a couple things. One with acrylics is it dries really, really fast. So what you can do to slow down the drying of your pigment is to use a acrylic retarder. So this is a medium that you can add to your acrylics. And I often will add it to my acrylics to just make it easier to mix. Um, so while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this stuff to the rest of my paints so that they last a little bit longer uh, and they don't dry immediately. All right. This summer I have plans to get one of Jesse's classes as an early birthday gift to myself. Oh, that's really, that's a great birthday gift, you know. Because investing in your own creativity has lifelong benefits for sure. It's something that you don't really think about, you know, and we often put ourselves last. We often put our, our experiences last. Um, somebody asked me once, they said, Bay, if you had all the money in the world and you didn't have to work, what would you do with it? And I said, I, you know, I, I'm not really a fan of material things. I love experiences. I would spend it all on experiences. So probably traveling the world and painting would be one of them. 
um, and investing in all kinds of professional development. <laughs> I want to learn everything. I would probably want to learn uh, Mandarin, which is actually my first language, but I have lost all of my language skills. So traveling is a really great way to learn a new language. I would also probably uh, try even more mediums, maybe learn uh, Chinese painting. Like I bought the paints, but I haven't actually taken any classes. And I would get better at digital art. Those are the things that I would do. Um, but yeah, investing in your personal growth is always great because it lasts a lifetime. So I'm really, really happy to, that, to hear that. And uh, yeah, always take care of yourself. Mary White says Mandarin is my second language. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, Mandarin's a cool language. It, it's very image-based, right? Like you can, it, it's, there's no alphabet though, so it's insanely hard. Um, <laughs> all right, so now that I'm at this stage and my piece is dry, pretty much dry, it's a little bit tacky. What I'm gonna do is start to draw out the vaquita. And I have some plans as well. I've saved some, uh, you can tell I eat a lot of avocados because I have like a bucket of these. I thought I'm gonna use it one day for a painting and now I am. So I'm going to collage some of this netting around the piece at the very end. So that's in the plans as well. Uh, like this stuff, so terrible for the environment, right? But oftentimes like buying things in bulk is more expensive than buying packaged things. I don't know why, maybe because it doesn't last as long. I don't know. It's just very annoying. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, the day has come. <laughs> I love avocados too. It's uh, brain food, they say. All right, so whenever you're painting something that is gray uh just keep in mind that it doesn't have to be gray like you notice that i don't really have black here um, because i wanted to make this animal very colorful gray is kind of a funny color because you can really sneak in as much color as you want with gray and get away with it right so uh as long as your values are pretty similar, you can get away with a lot of color, like almost any color. So the first thing I'm going to do is just start to sketch out my vaquita. And normally I do my sketches in chalk on top of, a, uh, on top of acrylic if I was just kind of toning this canvas um, with paint. But because I can't draw on chalk on top of this surface, I'm just gonna go directly onto it with my paint. And start to put in the portrait. So I decided I'm not gonna do a full body. I'm just going to do a close up portrait because I think that it would be more, uh, I guess more emotional, you know, when you see a creature and you look at it in the eye, it's definitely, you see the spirit of the animal uh, versus, you know, just the silhouette of it. Silhouettes are really important, don't get me wrong, but uh, I think that I wanted to, to do a close up of this creature. So the plan, is to let some of the images show through uh, and then put the netting on. I'm not sure what it's gonna look like yet, but <laughs> you are watching it happen live. Uh, Geocat says, they say the eyes are the window to the soul. They're absolutely right. 
Um, eyes are one of those things that, you know, we all look at first. It doesn't matter. I mean, unless it's a mole that doesn't have eyes. <laughs> Moles are so weird because every time I look at a mole, I'm like trying to find its eyes because that's where we naturally look. That's where we naturally respond to. But then they don't have eyes and they have just a weird looking nose. <laughs> so super weird creatures. Um, but yes, eyes are where we look at first. Usually if you're painting something that's gray or something that's white, it will take on the colors around it, right? So right now this animal is looking very, very blue. So to balance out that blue, I'm going to add some of this umber color, this raw umber, uh, and add a little bit of red. So if you want to neutralize a color, you just want to add the opposite color. So a little bit of color theory here. Phthalo blue is blue that's slightly green, right? So if you add uh, raw umber to it, raw umber is also slightly green. So then you get this dark greenish gray, right? So how do you neutralize that with some red? So to neutralize a color, you just add the opposite color to it. All right, so now I'm going to start to mix in some other tones. How many of you guys are uh, painters? Like how many of you guys actually paint? in acrylics or oils. I'd love to know because I know a lot of our subscribers are digital artists. Uh, but, you know, according to a poll that we sent out in the very beginning when we were deciding on content for this channel, 75% of you said that you want to see traditional content. Now I'm wondering if it's because you want to learn traditional content or if it's because you want to see and learn color theory. Let me know. I'm really interested. If I paint, it's watercolor. You paint in acrylics. Great. <laughs> my hands have paint and I don't even need to paint my nails. <laughs> oh. I'm a traditional artist, but I'm pencil, pen, and paper. Never did painting before. Ah, okay. That's okay. It's never too late. And the nice thing about acrylics, okay, we do have an acrylic camp coming up in the summer with Arunia. Arunia is really our uh, painting camp instructor. I teach drawing and painting, so I teach advanced painting techniques. Um, and if you're a beginner and you've never tried painting before, I encourage you to check out Arunia's camps in the summer. Our summer camps are just, have just been released. And the acrylic camp, uh, we only offer it one week in the summer. And you will learn step-by-step -step acrylic painting techniques. And I promise you, you will love it. <laughs> acrylic is one of the most versatile mediums. Unfortunately, it is plastic uh, based. When it dries, it's flexible. Uh, it's not finicky like um, some other mediums, like watercolor is very finicky. Gouache is really finicky. If you sneeze on a gouache painting, bye-bye painting. It's, <laughs> you know, um, or watercolor. It's just, if you try to, uh, paint on top of your watercolor it just tends to look very overworked but acrylic lends itself so nicely to working in layers and you know just if you're not really a painter or you've never tried painting before I would definitely recommend acrylic because it's the most forgiving and it's cheap and 
dries quickly so you can fix your mistakes. It's relatively non-toxic. And you can make it look just like oil paints. I might talk about that in another stream, maybe um, when, I'm paint when I'm painting water. You can also mix acrylics with oils, which I also do a lot. And I find that that's really fun as well. All right, see you later, Hina. Thank you for joining. Uh, Amumu says, I bought a set of watercolors about a year ago, but I haven't tried using them yet. Well, my friend, break them out and try it. The nice thing about testing out materials is, you know, you don't have to... I know, like, uh, if, you, if you're if you used to working digitally, uh, you're probably used to control Z a lot, right? So if you make a mistake, you can just undo it, and it's very easy no no commitment and it just feels less scary but you know for <laughs> before digital art was a thing for centuries um, we only had traditional mediums so we didn't really have that that luxury <laughs> And I think part of the process that makes painting enjoyable is sometimes you make a mistake, right? But it turns out to be a nice surprise. You, you might do something and you're like, huh, I didn't expect this to happen, but I kind of like it. So I'm going to keep it. <laughs> and then, you know, I know that happens with digital too. Like sometimes we have happy little mistakes or little accidents but with paint uh, it's I can't describe it just that the process is very very different and very enjoyable I just like the, the texture of it I love how you know I love mixing with my fingers going in and um, blending you trying different tools and then at the end you have something physical right you have something tangible and you can't really replace that something original okay painting skin tones with acrylic is a real pain though because it dries so quick that is true my friend but you can use something called acrylic retarder uh, I bought a big a big jar of this and so I keep uh, I, I just kept it in in smaller jars so that there I can travel with them but there are lots of mediums that you can use with acrylic to slow down the drying and it, you can make it feel similar to oils, right? And also, I will actually, if you guys want, let me know if you want me to do a lesson on skin tones in acrylic, because I can show you some techniques for that, like directly for that challenge. Uh, because if I was painting skin tones in oil, right? I would use a slightly different process. With acrylic, you kind of have to paint flat areas and then um, and then refine as you go and you know blend and, and smudge a little bit. Whereas with oils, you can it, it blends so naturally that the process is quite different. All right. Colfer says, yes, please, Mary White. That would be great. All right, okay. Okay, because I actually, I do specialize in portraiture and figure drawing. Um, that's what I get most of my commissions for, for is portraits. My, uh, my grandfather is a portrait artist 
as well. So I guess I <laughs> grew up around a lot of art, class mostly classical art. Okay. So right now I'm not really worrying too much about the details. I am just blocking in the shapes that I see and just want to make sure like it's a pretty simple the Kitas are pretty simple creatures um, and I didn't put up a reference on my screen because I would rather show you my palette uh, and in case you're curious about how I mix colors you can kind of see um, usually I will work with limited colors but today I just kind of took out some some colors more intuitively like <laughs> I didn't really plan out a, a palette I just knew that I wanted to put more color in this painting and I'm gonna do that a little bit later I'm just kind of blocking everything in for now this is the air hole or how the vaquitas breathe I think skin tones are one of the more difficult colors to mix and that would be a great stream. Yeah, definitely. And you know, skin tones, oh, that would be multiple streams, I think. <laughs> um, just because, you know, what type of skin tone, right? Um, there's darker skin tones, lighter skin tones, there's more translucent skin, there's oily skin, drier skin, wrinkly skin, baby skin, like it's all so different. So maybe that'll be a series. Uh, did you draw your little icon with the green shirt? No, <laughs> Jesse did that actually. Jesse made my PNG tuber uh, over here <laughs> in actually a stream called How to Make a PNG Tuber. And it was really, really cute. I love it. Um, so check that out. A lot of fun. You can make one for yourself. And we do actually have uh, some fan art too that people submit on our discord of the creators on our channel really really cute so I definitely appreciate <laughs> being drawn as well by our fans it's always really fun to see okay so the vaquitas have some interesting patterns that I want to make sure I get right I can't believe there are only 10 of these left in the wild. Maybe less. That means they will probably go extinct if they don't find each other and reproduce. They will be extinct within our lifetime for sure. And it's just so sad to see these beautiful creatures just disappear. Um, I want to be able to uh, paint in some of the uh, like some maybe some water droplets um, and sort of figure out how I want to approach the the lighting as well because um, right now I'm just focusing on the basic shapes and before I move on to the other stuff so I'm realizing that I need some black and I'm gonna take out a little bit of ivory black so these are uh, also very old Liquitex uh, acrylic colors I, I had these from when I was in university a long time ago um, and I got these little tiny jars because I did a lot of illustration using very thin paint and now I, I like the painterly style. I paint thick and I don't really do a lot of tight rendering. Um, I like the, the painterly look. I think that's kind of like an evolution of my style. But in the very beginning, I painted a lot of very tight, uh, very tight illustrations. And I think that was also partly uh, just learning 
learning painting, like if you learn, if you're learning digital art or if you're learning traditional art, it's always good to learn how to render, uh, how to paint very, very detailed blends and all that stuff, right? But once you know how to do that, then you can choose to paint differently. You can choose to paint looser, um, a little bit more abstract. So that's why these, these little jars, like these little jars are so small, <laughs> but they have a very high concentration of color. So that's the other thing. If you are buying acrylic, you know, acrylics tend to be very cheap, but the cheap brands of paint also um, are not very pigmented. Like sometimes you get a lot of filler and you don't get a lot of um, pigment. So if you want to use a, a better quality paint, have more pigment, then you want to get a concentrated paint. So this one says, this one is medium viscosity, uh, concentrated artist color, which means it has a lot of pigment. So highly pigmented colors are tend to be more expensive. So but you don't really, you know, if you're just starting out, you really don't need to spend a lot of money on paints. This is something I tell my students because when I was in university, uh, I had I went to Art Center and they had a student store. They probably still have it. <laughs> and I had to buy the most expensive professional quality paints. And I understand, you know, the teachers got uh, referral um, bonuses from me purchasing stuff from the store. And they used to, you know, they, they want you to experience good quality paint. So that part I understand. But what I didn't like about that was I was afraid to use my paints because they cost so much, right? They're just, you know, if I, I spent $40 on a small tube of gouache one time, it was a very, it was like a series four. So it was very expensive. And yeah, so if you spend $40 on a, on a color, like you're gonna be really, really conservative with that color, right? So I was afraid to use some of the colors that I had. And then I, they ended up drying and I didn't use them at all. Whereas if you just buy, you know, student grade paints, you're not afraid to use them. I know, right? $40, insane. If you look at the cost of oil paints now, it's crazy like oil paints just now to buy a big tube of white it's like $30 it's 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 really um, really expensive <laughs> so with acrylic paints you know you'll see you might pick up a tube and be like okay why is this tube $10 and the same amount of paint in another brand is $20. Typically it's the amount of pigment that is in the paint. So um, if you're just starting out, there is no need to buy super expensive paints because you know, you want to be able to make mistakes. You want to be able to try things. Uh, so I definitely don't make my students buy really expensive stuff. Um, and if you are buying paints, you'll see a lot of sets of paints. Like you'll see like, oh, get this giant set of, you know, 70 colors in these small tubes. Those are gimmicks. Don't buy those um, small tubes in like 40 colors because it looks good and those always sell because you know who doesn't like a big set of different colors but you actually don't learn much about mixing color uh, and you tend to rely on the pre-mixed color too much 
and I think that the best way to learn how to mix color is just to buy your primary colors. Like you really only need your, you only need like six colors, maybe seven um, to start. So you need your primaries, you need a big tube of white. If you're using acrylic, I would get some black and your, your primary colors, if you don't know, are your primary yellow, primary red, primary blue, right? Just get your primary colors, get white, black, and brown. So those are six colors. Those are six that I have on my palette, including purple. I only took out the purple because the red that I'm using contains yellow and the blue that I'm using contains yellow. So it's hard to make a nice purple uh, with the, with your, um, with my red and my blue, which is why I took out the purple. But if you have a primary blue and a primary red, you should be able to make nice purples and you shouldn't need to purchase purples or oranges or any secondary colors for that matter. Let me know if you want me to talk more about colors. <laughs> I am a big color theory nerd. Um, I know we have a lot of color theory uh, content on this channel, mostly digital though, um, but we have a couple of blogs on our website about mixing color, mixing paint colors. So if that's something you guys are interested in. Let us know in the chat. So I'm just sort of lightening up the certain areas, um, highlighting the underside of this creature. Uh, just catching up with the chat. This is why I have an oil rig and linseed farm to make my own acrylic or oil paint. That's really cool. Making your own paints, that that's that's awesome. I would love to learn how to do that. See, that's what I would do if I <laughs> if I had a million dollars and didn't need to work for a year, I would go learn my own paint, uh, learn how to mix my own paint or make my own paint. Uh, I have a really fancy art kit I got as a Christmas present. I haven't touched any of the materials because it's fancy and expensive. Yeah, y you know what? You don't need fancy stuff, really, because you need to dig into stuff. And I'm not saying get the cheapest stuff either, but uh, you know, just get get some, buy them when they're on sale, get a nice set of primaries, <laughs> because it'll uh, event it'll teach you how to mix color, right? Primary colors all the way. Yeah, this is your permission to use it. Don't wait. Have fun with it. Um, we are painting a vaquita. A vaquita, for those of you who just joined, hello, welcome in. Uh, we are painting a vaquita today. If you don't know or never heard of them before, vaquitas are a type of porpoise that are critically endangered. And there are only about 10 of them left in the wild. Insane. 10 left in the wild and mostly due to overfishing they are a byproduct of overfishing which is why uh, you'll see a lot of seafood packaging in the background here kind of the theme So I'm just adding a little bit of detail to the eyes. I will put more details on eventually, but you know, just a little bit of highlights will start to bring it to life. And we'll start to see the, the soul of these animals. Watching you paint is so relaxing. Thank you. Thank you. Painting is super relaxing for me. 
Uh, <clears throat> can't you just get pure pigment powder and mix it with linseed oil to make cheap oil paint? You can, but the problem with that is it's just so inconvenient, right? Actually, I have, I have a fun fact to share. Um, tubed paint was invented around the time the Impressionist movement started. And before, you know, artists had to, like artists like Vermeer um, and a lot of uh, artists, you know, back in the Renaissance and uh, the Baroque areas, they actually, the, the Baroque um, periods, they had to mix their own paint. And so a lot of the times that affects the process, right? They had to really uh, start with an underpainting by using two colors. So often it was like a burnt umber and a white and they would do a value painting, right? From their sketch or from a model. And then after the value painting, they would figure out what colors they want and because colors were so expensive, they they had to buy, you know, buy the colors, mix it themselves and then store them and they didn't last very long. And then once tubed paint was invented, it allowed artists to be able to paint outside, you know, paint outdoors. So then you would see, you know, vibrant colors like Monet's artwork. Uh, Van Gogh also painted a lot of his pieces outside. Uh, he painted Starry Night from the window of his uh, of his cell, like he was in a mental institution, and he painted it in his cell. But uh, artists like Monet and a lot of the Impressionists had the luxury of painting outside because they didn't, you know, their paints their pigments weren't blowing everywhere in the wind they didn't have to pre-mix their pigments so it led to art evolving um and i always thought that was really interesting because you know impression like arguably impressionism wouldn't exist had not had the paint not been invented. <clears throat> Amumu says, sorry, I'm just catching up with chat here. Amumu asks, do I need a canvas for acrylics or would heavy paper be good enough? I have good news for you, Amumu. You can use acrylic with anything. <laughs> you can paint acrylic on almost anything like here I'm painting on garbage um, <laughs> you can definitely uh, paint on you can use acrylic on the most variety uh, like the widest variety of surfaces which is another reason I like acrylic right you can paint on wood you can paint on rocks you can paint on oh gosh the list goes on uh, fabric, any type of fabric. Uh, I know an artist who is also an environmentalist and she would, instead of using canvas, she would stretch old t-shirts or um, jeans or fabrics that people throw away. You know, there's a lot of industrial waste from fashion, the fashion industry. So she would basically take uh, old t-shirts and stretch them on her canvases and paint on that, you know? So you can paint with anything. Uh, what am I painting on? I'm painting on canvas. So this is a, a stretched canvas. And if you were here in the beginning of the stream, you saw me collage this. Uh, this is seafood packaging plastic seafood packaging. I collaged it on with a matte uh, medium, sorry, a gel medium, uh, which glues the material or suspends the material in a clear acrylic. And then 
uh, then I painted on top of that. So yeah, you can paint on almost any type of surface. Uh, sometimes you will have to gesso that surface. Um, so for example, if you're painting on raw wood, you have to use a gesso, otherwise it'll just soak up the paint and it makes your colors look very dull. So if you're painting on untreated surfaces, sometimes you have to treat them with a medium or gesso first. So you can get clear gesso. Uh, gesso is basically like a primer for paint. I painted on my arm with acrylic once, yeah. Oh my gosh, I loved art history. You know, I thought history was the most boring thing in the world. Like I was like, oh my gosh, do I have to go to these art history lessons? But then when I went, I realized like art history is the most fun when you learn it with art. <laughs> because you get to see the you know, you get to see history interpreted by artists um, and you can you can see kind of how the movements relate to innovations, right? Just like how abstract art uh, became a thing when photography was invented, right? Because why do you need to paint realistically anymore? You don't because you can just take a photo. Uh, and, you know, I think today the biggest innovation that we are seeing uh, and that's going to change everything in the next couple of years is AI. So, you know, think about how that's going to change digital art, right? We don't really think about it, but I think that unfortunately will change a lot of concept art. Uh, there's a lot of concept artists who now, you know, you, you really have to think, okay, how is that, how is digital innovation going to change this industry or change this movement? So I'm very interested in seeing, I don't know, maybe traditional art will make a comeback, right? Because AI can't really paint traditionally. Who knows? Who knows? Ugh, I know, I know, AI. <laughs> it's definitely a topic that is, uh, uh, that is kind of like this, this endless, um, up for endless debate. And it's a difficult topic to talk about because it is going to replace a lot of different industries. Love the placement of the responsibly sourced phrase. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You know, I can never tell whether or not those things are genuine, right? Because sure, you can, you know, you can definitely, as if you're in the fishing industry, you can definitely attempt to source your seafood responsibly. Like there's always, uh, you know, the intent of, living with nature and dis disrupting it the least, right? There's always that intent, but there's always unintentional uh, byproducts and there are always accidents that happen and there's always a cost. So if you are responsibly sourced 80% of the time, right? That's better than 0% of the time, but that still means that 20% of the time there are endangered or critically endangered species that get tangled in the nets and don't make it out alive, right? So take it with a grain of salt. Uh, what can we do to, to save all of these well, I mean, we can't save all of them, but we can make art that promotes awareness. Uh, always know where your food comes from. Don't eat, uh, you know, 
don't support restaurants or other um, companies that might, you know, sell things like shark fin soups, which is a very popular wedding tradition. And it's it leads to so much death. Oh my gosh, don't get me started. <laughs> But I think it, it, it all starts with awareness, right? Okay, so you can see that I'm using my finger to blend a lot of this uh, because, you know, that's the nice thing about acrylics is that you can blend with your finger and it's very easy. Instead of painting every single drop, I'm just putting on some texture in the meantime and then sort of layering my paint as I go. All right. Is anatomy hard on acrylics? I'm just catching up with chat here. Uh, would you ever try to experiment with paint markers? Yes, I recently painted all my hockey pucks with paint markers <laughs> because I kept getting my pucks stolen and they were a lot of fun. Uh, is anatomy hard on acrylics? Well, it depends on what kind of anatomy, right? When I think of anatomy or studying anatomy, I think about dry mediums um, first. Like if you want to study painted anatomy, it, you can, it, it, it's, it's not really hard. It's just how familiar are you with the medium, right? If you don't paint with acrylics a lot, sure, it's going to be hard. But once you paint, like just give yourself some time, right? If you make seven paintings, just make seven paintings and they can be pretty small. After seven paintings, I feel like you would get a better grasp of the medium come to my painting streams <laughs> and paint with me. Uh, and I think that, you know, the more familiar you are with the medium, then it, it, it's not hard anymore, right? So anatomy is a hard topic in general. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't really matter what medium you use, even digital anatomy is, is hard. So it's just kind of a, a hard topic. Um, Faye, what's your opinion on Undertale, if you know what that is? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Is that an anime? Am I thinking, or I'm thinking that something else. Um, my family eats mostly vegetarian since meat is expensive and the industry can be pretty harmful to the environment. That is awesome. I also am vegetarian. Well, I'm pescatarian. I, I do eat fish. Uh, but being vegetarian is hard. It's, it's, it's not easy, uh, you know, to... It, it, it's not easy to refuse things like bacon. <laughs> like, I love bacon, and it's very, very hard. Like, every time I smell bacon, I'm just like, oh my gosh, why does it have to smell so good? Uh, but it's something that can definitely help reduce the impact on the environment, and the more, the more popular it is, like, I'm always happy to see restaurants that have vegetarian options, um, because it's telling us that the world is changing and that, you know, again, we decide what we do with our money as consumers. So we, it, we may not think that it makes a difference, but it really does. So that's great. Um, 70% effort is better than no effort and it all adds up in the long term. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Leo, welcome to the chat. Uh, Geocat says that would drive me crazy. Paint on my hand feels weird. It, it does, uh, which is why I'm like rubbing my hands together. <laughs> it 
<laughs> to kind of get rid of that acrylic. But you know what? Acrylic comes off pretty easily off of your hands. I don't like oil paint on my hands because you have to use uh, you have to use like a solvent or um, mineral spirits to get rid of it. So I really don't like it. Like I probably would recommend using gloves or something. Um, but acrylic, I, I don't mind. Don't mind it as much. Right now, what I'm doing is just kind of blending some of the paints and softening up some of those edges that I had put down earlier. Oh, puck painting. That needs to be a stream. <laughs> I... <laughs> You know, my pucks are in my hockey bag, so I can't uh, show you right now, but I didn't actually, I, I drew little line drawings on them and like I wrote a bunch of lines like, you know, um, top shelf or chirp, you know, hockey terminology. It was a lot of fun. Like the, the typography element of that. So, <laughs> um, I just convinced myself that bacon is poisonous. <laughs> Probably is if you eat it every day. Um, acrylic paint between my nails feel crazy. Also, oil paint smell makes me ill. <laughs> acrylic paint between my nails. Yeah, it does. But you know what? You can just peel it off. It's like that part of acrylic. I, I don't actually mind. So... Yeah, you definitely get used to it in the beginning. It's it's not fun, right? But you definitely uh, get used to that that feeling, and then it's not so bad anymore. Acrylic paint does ruin your brushes, though. Like I gotta say, <laughs> it's not friendly on brushes. I'm just adding some reflected light to the eyes and a trick to adding reflected light. I just added some blue here is to really see what, uh, what you have around you, right? So any creature that's gray or white will sort of take on the colors around them. So in this case, there's a lot of blue, right? So it makes sense that the reflection would be blue. If I wanted to make the reflection purple, for example, I would have to put some purple in the background. Uh, otherwise it doesn't really make sense. Like it doesn't have a good sense of harmony or unity. By the way, if you haven't seen our educational series on the elements and principles of art, I definitely recommend checking those out. Elements and principles of art. It's the foundation of art theory. And it's something that in Ontario, where I'm from and where Wing Canvas is based, Ontario, Canada, it's part of our curriculum. So from grade one, we are taught the elements and principles. So things like balance, uh, which is a principle of art, line, shape, color, etc. But you'd be surprised at how we forget about those key elements when we are adults and how important they are to the success of a piece of a composition. So sometimes you might look at a piece of art and be like wow that is really beautiful and i have no idea why i like it so much and it's probably because of the use of the elements and principles that make it so appealing uh, it's one of the it's one of the things that you can also use to self-assess or to critique your artwork Whenever you're stuck, you can go back to those elements and principles, go down that checklist and be like, how is my 
emphasis in this piece. How is my movement? How is my rhythm and balance? You know, and it's a really, really helpful tool and a good thing to have in your visual, um, I guess, in your art toolkit, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. We actually made an entire playlist about the elements and principles of art, mostly to help teachers um, because during the pandemic, okay guys, it's wing, wing canvas history time. <laughs> during the pandemic, we decided to make videos on YouTube, uh, mostly to help our existing students at the time when we were, we used to be an in-person studio uh, and we used to, you know, have our students come into the studio. We were really, really busy every week, every weekend. We were packed with parties. We did camps, uh, and we had schools come to the studio as well on field trips and whatnot. And during the pandemic, all access was closed. Teachers had to figure out how to teach art online. And that was a big challenge. For them and for us too right we had to figure it out and YouTube was a space where we could create free art education tools to help teachers who were struggling with teaching art uh, and struggling to explain the elements and principles in a not boring way right art theory anything theory like you think about theory you're like oh my gosh that's sounds boring already <laughs> so uh this was a project that jesse and the team worked on together uh we wanted to find a way to make art theory accessible and fun so we made a series of videos about the elements and principles of art explained in a very modern way <laughs> they're a lot of fun and you can find that playlist and bookmark it. Thank you, Joe, for linking that playlist. You can open that playlist in a new tab and bookmark it. So you can always go back to it whenever you are feeling stuck. Uh, yeah, so when we moved online, it was a whole new, whole new evolution of the company and now we are able to find amazing art nerds from around the world to connect with. And even before the pandemic, our mission was to make art and education easily accessible to everyone. Obviously, we, we were only able to do that locally, but now we are able to do that on an international level. So. It's been a really fun journey and I'm so happy you guys are here. Uh, <laughs> it's lore time, Wink give us lore time. <laughs> what do you wanna know? Let me know, it's been 10 years. There's a lot of lore. <laughs> um, by the way, isn't it con contradictory to send a message about ocean life while painting with plastic based paint. How are you going to dispose of the dried paint without harming ocean life? You know what? <laughs> I think that uh, acrylics, well, first of all, I didn't buy any new paints and acrylic paints. It's true. They do that. You do have to dispose of them responsibly. Um, but I have so much paint that I need to use up and everything like i said it's almost impossible to uh, create something and not have it like not have a byproduct that's harmful right everything affects everything else from the dish soap you use to the shampoo that you use like we all can just do our best and that is good enough you know if I can, with this stream, if I can help people become aware, more aware of this incredible animal and how little time we have left with it, 
and I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Mary White says, my art has gotten so much better since I found you guys. That's great. Thank you so much. Uh, we are very happy about that and happy to hear you say that. Uh, and the more paint you put on the canvas, the less that goes into the garbage. That's true as well. Uh, I mean, there's even waste. You, If you really want to <laughs> go deep into it, there's even waste with digital, right? There's waste with electricity like there's just so much and we can't be perfect even digital currency like i thought that uh you know digital currency is a lot more sustainable than printed currency like printed money but then you know you need these huge servers and lots of electricity to power those servers right so there's really no perfect solution so I think the best thing to do is just to do our best. And sometimes, Jesse always says this, but good enough is better than perfect. I think the strive for perfection is, it holds a lot of people back, especially artists. Like we, <laughs> I don't know, like, let me know if that's true. If you're an artist, do you find that you can be a perfectionist? Do you find that perfectionism holds you back on a lot of things I think that's like a good guideline for life as well you know good enough is better than perfect done is better than not done right no oh, thanks Kevin <laughs> uh Yes. You know what? I, I've been, I've battled perfectionism for so long and it took me forever to finish my paintings. Like I, I, I would, I would be so obsessed with getting it perfect that I just, I never, you know, I stopped publishing my work or I wouldn't, I would be afraid to show anybody unless it was absolutely perfect. And that really held me back. And I think sometimes when you work on stuff and it's not perfect, you kind of just have to leave it. Like you just have to let it go, be at peace with it, <laughs> you know? Uh, when you're done with a painting and you look at it three years later, you might be like, oh, that that's terrible. I can't believe I, I, I released that into the wild. <laughs> but that is just a, a stage of your creativity in your sort of your evolution as an artist right your so I wouldn't really worry too much about it just try new things enjoy the process and try not to be a perfectionist because you know for this stream I only had about an hour and a half Can you guys hear my water <laughs> here's here's my water uh, bin but I only have an hour and a half and after that I'm done like whatever happens happens and I'm gonna be at peace with that <laughs> so sometimes uh, sometimes you might be like oh I just have this one more thing there's just one more thing that I want to do and then you do that thing and then you're like, oh no, it, it, I have one, one more thing. And then before you know it, your painting looks overworked, right? So <laughs> somebody wise once said that a painting is never finished. It just stops in interesting places. So if your painting is at an interesting place, sometimes the wise thing to do is just stop. Okay. Right now I'm just kind of softening up some of those edges. Okay. 
And I'm putting in some highlights. So sometimes when you are thinking about the contrast of a piece, contrast is also an element, sorry, a principle of art, hint, hint. Go watch the elements and principles playlist after this. Um, contrast is one of those things that can be really powerful in your composition um, because you know it allows you to lead the eye um, it allows you to guide the viewer right which part of the piece do you want the most contrast uh, is it in the eye you know is it uh, the negative space and thinking about that will really help you with your decision making and the other thing I wanted to show you about acrylics is that you can scrape stuff off so for example if I want to get back some of the uh, background I can scrape it off either using a palette knife or a sandpaper and I can bring back some of those edges that I've lost. Um, there are some drips on this Vaquita as well, like sort of drops and droplets on them. So now I'm gonna paint a couple of droplets and some drips. So, artist being perfectionist is kind of like chocolate being brown <laughs> well there is white chocolate my friend be the white chocolate um, <laughs> it's I'm not sure exactly how different types of paint work but wouldn't watercolor be the more appropriate options thematically more accurate presumably much more environmentally friendly true that I did think about watercolor but I really did want to reuse or find a purpose for all of this plastic that I saved and I already have a series that I did uh, using this medium so it was a choice uh, have you ever accidentally drank your paint water when you keep it in a glass or something yes yes oh my goodness so I have my coffee here and I have my paint water here and I do not keep my paint water in a cup uh, I use an old bulk <laughs> bulk uh, paint container, which I cut in half um, because that way there is no confusion, right? Uh. <laughs> it's hard to drink your paint water when your paint water cup looks like it's been used by you since the 15th century. Totally, <laughs> totally why I do that. Um... All right, let's keep going here. So what do I want to do now? I talked about doing drips. So I'm going to do some drips. So to do drips, I kind of want these drips to be a little bit grayish. So what I might do, this may or may not go well, but I'm going to add some splashes. Oh, and I just got it on my face. Okay, so I just added some splashes and then I'm going to knock my painting <laughs> and try to make those into drips. I don't think I used paint that was uh, liquidy enough. But let's try this again. There we go. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going a little bit crazy and I just got paint everywhere, uh, but I can also remove it in the areas that I don't want it to be in and I'm just going to let it drip. So I can artificially stop one of these drips as well, you know, like that. I like those drips. It gives it a lot of texture. Uh, drippy, drippy. <laughs> the eyes in the cherub and dragon stream for the dragon were also amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? I was obsessed with eyes when I was a teen. Um, I used to take, like, I used to go to the movies and then I'd take those, uh, um, magazines from those movie theaters. I don't know if they do that. They probably don't do it anymore, um, because print is a big waste, but, they used to have these magazines and I would I would bring the the magazines that had the celebrities uh, and I would paint or, or draw the eyes of celebrities like that was what I would do to study eyes um, and I got really good at, at drawing eyes because I drew thousands of them so that's really how you get good at anything, is to just practice and not try to make it perfect, right? Not Try, try to not let perfection get in the way. Okay, so before I add the netting to this paint, I had this idea of sanding it a little bit. Um, <laughs> is it really paint if it doesn't go everywhere? <laughs> that is a good question. Um, I have this sanding block and I want to, like, part of the idea of this piece is to have the Vaquita disappear, like having it kind of disappear, right? Into the, uh, into the garbage. So, to really illustrate that I wanted to get some of the collaged parts back and to do that you can actually use sandpaper so I'm trying to find a clean piece of sandpaper here but you can just get a piece of sandpaper you know from the hardware store and start to remove some of the, the parts that you don't want, right? Another really nice part about, nice thing about acrylic that you can sand. So I'm gonna start sanding the edges down so that it looks like this creature is kind of disappearing. So I'm picking up some of that gel medium, right? So you can see it just starts to peel away a little bit. But I really like seeing some of that texture show through, you know, that was the original idea. And it gives it a little bit more texture, a little bit more visual interest. Maybe you guys could do a video on how to give the texture of gold. We have with a digital video. I remember working on one of Jessie's videos uh, where she, it's a, it's a video on digital rendering and she did 
talk about how to render gold. Uh, but we haven't really done a traditional video yet. But yeah, if you guys have suggestions for what you want to see in our streams, then definitely join our Discord and let us know in the feedback channel and content suggestions. We have that because we do create content based on what our students and our patrons and our followers want. So, all right. I'd love to see some work with other traditional media like markers and pencils. Yeah, definitely. We definitely have that planned. All right, so here's where I'm at so far. And I talked about using some netting. So I have this type of netting here and it's from avocado uh, packaging that I saved. And I'm going to try to incorporate this in my piece as well and figure out how I want to use it on top of this piece, right? To kind of illustrate that um, concept of them being caught in the fishing nets. I have purple ones as well, but the purple one I feel kind of blends into the background too much. So I'm going to use this darker one instead. So in my reference picture, there is a lot of netting sort of all around it. And I'm going to just experiment with this <laughs> and see where it goes. This is a this is actually a special stream because I wanted to demonstrate some mixed media techniques and how much fun things like collage could be, right? And encourage you guys to experiment with it. Um, but for more sort of step by step, and for more. Um, you know, tutorials like how to paint gold or how to paint um, faces. Those are definitely streams that we do have planned. Um, we have a lot of how to streams planned because they seem to help the most people. Um, so, all right. So I'm going to start off with this strip and kind of see where it goes. Uh, again, I'm going to take out my super heavy matte gel. And just use a different corner of my canvas here. All right. So, oh, there's a lot of debris on here. It's getting real messy. Okay, so again, I'm just going to put this gel on very thick. You can see that it's covering some of my drawing or some of, sorry, some of my colors, but it's okay. Like it, once it dries, it's gonna be completely clear. So I do have to put that on quite thick.
to be able to glue this netting on. I've never actually collaged netting before, so I don't really know what to expect. I think I just have to put on a lot of this um, gel to be able to let it hold, right? So like right on top, almost like suspending it within the painting. And it looks like it's white underneath, like it looks like I've lost a bit of it, but once it dries, it will um, go back to the original color that was underneath. So uh, <laughs> I kind of have to be, I kind of have to trust the process and just trust that it will all come together, whatever it ends up being. All right, so I'm going to put some more netting here at the bottom. Yeah, so, oh my gosh, we only have about 10 minutes left, 13 minutes left be exact so I have to I have to work fast hopefully this will dry um, and you'll be able to see the transparency and I will eventually cut the edges off so once this dries, I will trim it off with a uh, with a knife or a uh, with some scissors. And I feel like the net needs to be doubled up. Like I feel like it's kind of too perfect on this side. So I'm going to add another strip here. Oh, the other nice thing about uh, painting uh, on canvas is that you can recycle your paintings that you don't like anymore. So instead of throwing them in the trash, you can use gesso to uh, cover it up, cover up your old painting and put new stuff on top. Like the old masters used to do that all the time. If you x-ray a Rembrandt or something, you might get like a whole new painting underneath super exciting <laughs> I used to do that all the time with the paintings that I ended up hating I would just uh, paint on top of it ah! okay Yeah, definitely the hair dryer would help, um, but I don't think I have one close by, uh, so I think I'm just going to leave it, let it dry naturally. But yes, hair dryers definitely help speed up the drying of things. And my fingers are so dirty. They are full of this gel. <laughs> I don't know. I, I kind of like getting getting messy sometimes, though. It's, there's something liberating about it, you know? 
like when we used to have kids at the studio uh, and birthday parties and stuff, there were kids who would love to just put their fingers in the palette of colors. Like they were done their painting and then they would just like rub it all together with their fingers and dye their hands uh, usually this this bluish gray color. And they loved it. <laughs> and I think as adults, we're, we, we, we stop liking those types of things. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I'm just going to leave this piece for a second because it needs a little bit of time to dry. Uh, I don't have that, so I use white paint instead. Now I have an almost perfectly smooth canvas because of how much I painted over it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the gesso has some... Uh, it has more grip because it kind of has chalk in inside of it, right? So that way, you know, gesso can be really... Uh, it could be really nice. It could be a really nice approach to... Uh, getting some of that tooth back right whereas with white paint you don't really have that uh, you don't have that tooth it tends to be very smooth so it doesn't grip the paint as well but you know if that's all you have then that's all you have you gotta sometimes work with what you have there's nothing wrong with that and i will cut off the edges once it's dry but I think for now I have to leave it because if I mess with it, it's just going to get even worse in terms of the mess. I'm just going to cut off what I can. And the other thing I did want to do is do some simple glazing. So what I mean by that is, for example, if I want this edge to be to have more contrast, then I can make what's around it a little bit darker, right? So uh, if I wanted this part to stand out, then I use kind of what's called artificial contrast to really make that part pop. So glazing is just the technique of putting on paint that's transparent or translucent to shift the color a little bit. Right? If I want the attention to be on this highlight, then I need to tone down areas of the painting that is sticking out right now so sometimes it's good to have a you know like a big picture that you're working towards and all right so I'm gonna leave it for now and just check up with the chat it probably won't dry in time because of how thick it is. Yeah, it probably won't, but I will post a final picture of what it looks like once it's dry and I clean up the netting around it on the Discord. Uh, once this is dry, I need to give it a little bit of time, but I will probably go in and darken some of the edges. So I'll probably, you know, to make that mesh look like it's actually underneath, I would have to go in and kind of darken this, right? Um, and then, the parts that I want brought out a little bit more. So for example, oh, I know what I can do now. I can put in a bit of a cast shadow on that net. So for example, the, the netting would cast a little bit of a shadow. So I would have to some of that in and I use my fingers all the time when I'm painting with acrylics just because it's like the easier tool to blend with uh, and I don't mind getting my fingers dirty 
I actually kind of like it. <laughs> oh no, he's trapped for him. <laughs> I know. He's uh he's got this very sort of serene expression to him as well. Um now that I've made this part a little darker, I want to go back in and make sure that the edges pop more. So this thalo blue and white makes a really nice like vibrant blue which I'm going to use to get his silhouette back. You can see how my, my brush is really clunky right now, like super clunky. So I like using a palette knife to remove that paint, right? Instead of wiping my brush, which then all that paint will end up on a paper towel, um, you can actually use a palette knife. And I think I'm gonna switch to a flat brush I like using flat brushes for my edges because it allows me to um, get a nice, nice hard edge. I'm struggling here though to find my, my brushes. Okay, we'll use this brush. There we go. All right, so we have a few minutes left. And the last little bit of time, like if you are painting um, with a deadline, I, I definitely encourage you guys to paint with a deadline like don't if you allow yourself too much time then it's very easy to just nitpick at it right and just never finish so ask yourself like if you have five minutes left ask yourself what can i do in the last five minutes to make the greatest impact because a lot of the times we just paint what we want to paint instead of what's going to make the biggest difference. So I think what will make the biggest difference for me is to add more highlights so that the eyes look a bit more convincing. They look um, a little bit more, I guess, sad. And draws you in a bit more. I'm really going for the heartstrings here. Okay. All right. So it, this will take a bit of time to dry um, and I may have to go over the netting again with, oh, I can't, I can't do that right now. It's just going to make it worse. I have to cover it with even more gel medium. Uh, the other thing I could do is tone my gel medium. So just like I made the edges a little bit darker, okay, we might go a few minutes over time, sorry. Uh, if I wanted to tone it so you can see that I'm mixing color into it now, right? You can do that as well. So it's almost like a transparent glaze that will darken some of the edges. The only thing with, with this type of treatment is that uh, it can also paint the, the fabric, 
right? This, this mesh is also going to be tinted with this color. But at least it sort of darkens the edges a bit so that your eyes focus more on the vaquita itself. All right. <laughs> okay, so before we go, I just want to thank everybody for joining me. If you're drawing along with me or creating as you are in this stream, please share your creations. We would love to see what you guys make. Um, we love art nerds at Wing Canvas. You can find us at Wing Canvas uh, on Discord. Uh, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook as well as Patreon. And if you found value in this video, give it a like and tell your art nerd friends about it. We offer free live streams every weekend. Right now they are Saturday and Sunday at 3 p.m. And you can learn with other art nerds like us. Josh will be streaming tomorrow. He's gonna be doing an animation stream. Uh, Jesse specializes in digital illustration. I am the traditional artist and Iggy specializes in cartooning and anime as well as digital art. And if you didn't know, you can also become a Patreon member. We want to make learning very easy and flexible. So if you are a Patreon member, you can get critiques from our staff so all of our artists were very active on the discord uh, as well as our lovely mods so you can have access to members only chat and critiques as well as art files from the streams uh, layered files so that you can see the process uh, you can see all of our videos before they're released as well as monthly class recordings and so you can also take classes with us, uh, but this is uh, be becoming a member gives you discounts to those classes as well as a private community. So whenever you're stuck, you can uh, ask the community, ask our members uh, and get critiques and feedback from our instructors. And if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we have to stick together. So be sure you check out the links to our social media, exclamation mark socials, and check out our website for class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors. So thank you so much guys for joining me in this stream. I will post the final on the Discord. So hopefully i will see you next time and don't forget to join josh tomorrow in his animation stream he's going to be animating mouths very exciting all right thanks again everybody for joining and i will see you next time bye bye Thank you.